Horse Sculpture in Beaten Bronze. That's it. There you have it. Um, let me explain. Come this way. Come this way. Okay, so I'm doing a sculpture in bronze. Um, here I've done a clay maquette, a mock-up, if you will, to get me the topography of what we're doing. So this is the size of it. This will be going onto a wall. This is a sculpture in high relief. And um, yeah, what can I say? I've got my piece of bronze already cut out here. And I have traced the um, silhouette onto it um, from the backside here. And now we got to hammering this out. I'm able to make this entire thing out of one sheet of bronze. I will be adding the mane, the rocks, and the um, tail after the fact in a contrasting metal. I think it'll be very interesting. Hi, I'm Thak. Welcome to this video. I got a lot of pounding ahead of me. Let us begin. So this is essentially just a lot of brute force to begin and I'm not really looking forward to it actually. I've got my lead shot bag here um, and it's on my little triangular table here. So I've got a low and I've got a domed hammer and I am going to just pound out a bulge vaguely in the shape of the finished sculpture. So let us begin. Okay, that was uh, three passes, um, bulging it out and then putting it on the floor, flattening it out. It's now work hardened, uh, being a copper based metal or you know, even steel will work hardened as well. So hammering it, it starts to get stiff and at a certain point I'm gonna have to soften it up or anneal it. And this um, particular application, I'll be using my Tiger Torch propane um, to bring it up to some color and then just letting it air cool and that will uh, create the annealing effect, soften it up so that I can go in for another round of hammering. All right, so the heavy brute work is now done. I've got my bulge um, vaguely where it needs to be, higher in the areas where it needs to be. Um, now what I've done is I've cleared my triangular table. This is two inch thick steel here, so it's like its own little anvil table. Um, and I've, it's just about the right size and shape for this particular um, piece. So I've got it clamped down and I've got my uh, silhouette sharpied out and now what I want to do is just come in with a very dull cold chisel and bring that in. Nice, quiet, relaxing process. So we get this all nailed down then I've got my um, my basic shape from there I can start really getting into the shaping. Uh, you might note at this point that this looks very squash. Again I realize this is um, a three-quarter perspective that is foreshortened. So um, right now it looks a little bit weird, um, probably not quite as much in the camera because you guys are in two dimensions, but um, this will have its um, best effect back about 10 or 15 feet when it's up on the wall. Um, then it should pop out and be quite lifelike if I can pull it off. But right now I'm looking at it and it just looks uh, very weird. So from my perspective, not so good, but I'm trusting in my abilities to make it come out stellar. So here we go. Ah! 
I have annealed it for the second time. Actually, I had Ethan anneal it, I'm lying to you, but uh, it was annealed a second time. And now um, I have just blocked out a couple of the higher points here. So I'm just going to flip it over and bulge out those areas and just kind of block out um, the main topography. rule um, so I've got most of the shape already in place now now time will stretch out hours will become days will become weeks um, as I refine the detail on this but basically I've got my, my basic topography marked out and uh, yeah that's all I can say I'm just gonna get into refining which is gonna go on for a long time so I will see you later goodbye so a few days have elapsed and I've been pounding away um, and things are starting to take shape now. Uh, essentially at this point I've blocked out all the different features um, and now what I'm doing is kind of smoothing things out. You can see uh, you can see here it's still pretty lumpy there um, and down in here very vague but here I've started to refine the smooth things out a little bit. Um, and now what I need to do is start really establishing the different heights of the pieces. For example, like this shoulder is, is out quite a bit, this flank is, and the head will be out. Everything else has to kind of lay back. Realizing we're working with uh, fairly low relief, at least low relief as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I have to create that illusion. Um, you guys on the camera are probably getting a much better effect than I am in um, three-dimensional real life here. Um, this is a very foreshortened horse. It's all kind of squashed down and that is also visually heightened by the fact that I'm using a two-foot strip here and the diagonal on which I've got it creates it. The whole thing has a very trapezoidal look to it right now. So it's a little jarring for me. Um, as I stand it up and step back, the effect is better and I'm, I'm guessing you guys are seeing something that is looking pretty decent so anyway uh, that's where I'm at process wise how this is done Eric if you can just come down to the table here all right so I'm working on my what I call the triangular table here and um, it's about the right size and shape to, to really work quite well with this particular piece and I'm working primarily into my lead shot bag or bags more appropriately I've got my little one here and I'm able to kind of create um, the appropriate shape oftentimes to work into. So um, a lot of this one is being done from the inside where I'm at this point right now I'm just looking at the bigger bumps there and anomalies and I'm just tapping them out. So whereas the first hour was really heavy slugging with a heavier hammer, now I'm down to a fairly light ball peen hammer and I'm just subtly moving um, areas out and trying to uh, ease out the uh, transitions, um, get everything looking really good. At this point to me though, it's got a very paint by number sort of look because I basically just outlined um, the the different features quite starkly now what I need to do is transition them and and add in subtlety as I start establishing the actual planes there uh, so a long way to go but I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you are enjoying it as well so see you in a couple hours so after going through various stages of denial and then finally acceptance I realized my three-quarter perspective was not working it just it, it was the horse was squashed it looked like a pygmy horse it just wasn't gonna fly so I came to the realization I needed to do something so what I did was chop the horse in half right behind the shoulder and stretched it out five inches gave it five inches of belly and that was able to allow me um, to create a perspective that was a little bit more realistic not quite fully um, on side side on but 
uh, enough that the proportions uh, were plausible. And then I found that I had to scratch out the legs and the face. Well, you'll see as we go through the video, I had to, watching the video last night, realized that we didn't have an explanation of why halfway through the process, the horse was suddenly chopped into two pieces. Um, and so anyway, continue on with the video. You'll see how it all comes together. And I redeem myself in the end by the Dunning-Kruger effect, I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but uh, something I was looking into a little while ago, and it, it really st kind of stands true for what I'm doing right now. Um, in beginners, uh, once they learn a few things about a new skill, uh, they don't realize how little they know and they get a false confidence and they think they're better than they actually are. But as you continue to develop your skills, um, you realize how much more there is to know. And at the same time, as you get deeper into it, you forget the basics and foundational stuff that you do know. So your, um, your perception retreats from the basic stuff and, and looks into the infinite of the stuff that you don't know and you're realizing how much you really don't know. So I think I'm somewhere um, deep in that morass right now, realizing um, I know what I don't know and I, I'm having a hard time trying to piece everything together and it's uh, I'm struggling with this one. I, I think I made a misstep in the way that I first laid it out and now as I'm doing it with the deeper um, relief, I'm realizing I have to go back to more of a 3D. Anyway, I'll talk about that more later. Ah, let's get into the face. That's what we're doing this morning. So I've got this just kind of roughed out now. I want to start nailing down some of these features. So I've just chalked in a couple of them there. Um, so let's get onto the shot bag and start pounding out features. Conventional wisdom says you should not change horses midstream, but I have, forgive the metaphor, changed horses midstream twice during this project now because I made bad decisions. And uh, uh, I ne ended up needing to lengthen the legs because of how I had the perspective, everything was squashed. Anyway, I did that. Once I did that, I realized that the, the face that I had done, which was quite nice, was a little bit too short. So I had to lengthen that by an inch, which I'm currently in the process of doing that. So I'm just, uh, I'm struggling at this point in time. I'm trying to get everything to work together to get my actual base on the depth and the perspective that I've got to get the proportions to be at least conceivably uh, accurate. So anyway, anyway, it's working, I guess. What I've done is the main I'm going to have blowing out the front here, and I've done this out of copper. So a contrast, it'll be a subtle contrast, but the bronze to the copper, um, having it do that, and that, that's just a little bit of repousse of work to make that happen. I'm going to just demonstrate a little bit of the tail. So on the other end, I'll be doing a tail. That is my little cutout for it. Let's begin. At long last, I've got all the components shaped now. So to come on down, take a look here at my pile of stuff. This is actually the horse. Um, and, and let me just, uh, before I put it together here, let me just uh, go for, over a couple of pieces. Um, so the hooves I did out of brass, and um, not much to say about that. They're going to get fastened on there. I'm just doing that for a bit of contrast. Um, so with bronze, brass, and then the main I did out of copper. Um, this piece needs some more work here. I'm still working on some of the fine details there. Um, things I may have forgotten. Let's uh, talk about the hair texture. I don't think we've talked about that in this video. I did that uh, 
in my previous build where I did the uh, deer head and uh, did this fur structure here. So we'll just take a quick shot of this because I don't think we've captured it in this video yet. So Eric, if you just pan over here for a second. So I've got this modified hammer here, which is what I use for doing the hair texture. And I'll just go up in a area here. So basically just working over a stake, I create all of these thousands of little vertical lines that creates the illusion of fur. And when I do that, um, I do it in such a way that it follows the, I don't know, energy of, or the dynamic shape of the horse. So here it's coming down. Also follows the actual hair pattern of the animal, but coming down like this, and flowing like that. So I do have a sense of movement and then the body, it flares out there. So that helps to give it a visual um, lines, a sense of movement, that's important. So now uh, we'll just speed up the film and watch me bolt this whole thing together and let's see what the actual piece looks like as one piece. So there she is, he is, he is, and it looks pretty good. Um, so I'm happy with the overall effect here. There's quite a bit that I need to do. Now, um, this seam, of course, needs to be welded and ground, but before I do that, I wanna do some refinement. Now that I've got the actual full thing together, I can take a look at the posture and just see um, any anomalies, and then I can go back over when I did the hair texture, a lot of the mus muscle detail got kind of flattened out. So I need to go back and rework basically every square inch of the body. Um, also have to now look at how all the components tie together the face. Um, I exaggerated the features on it and I need, need to decide now, do I tone that back or do I keep that theatrical um, exaggerated effect on it? Uh, the tail, by the way, is still up on the table. Eric, why don't you pan over to the table there and you can see I'm still working on that. Um, so that needs to be finished off and then I need to rework the front part of the mane here to look more like the rest of it. Um, I'm trying to make this all work together. I may need to do something in here to make this flow out here. But right now I'm trying to get, um, I want that dynamic look. The tail is gonna become flaring up here, so it has a lot of the wind blowing hair, um, which gives it some great energy. And you know, I always, one of my mandates for sculpture is that it shouldn't look static. I want it to have a semblance of life. So here, what I was looking for was mus muscular tension. Um, I wanted this thing just to uh, convey a sense of solid power. Um, but I also wanted to add the dynamic energy of, of the wind there. I wanted, just wanted this thing to have a little bit of liveliness. So in that regard, I was sacrificing some anatomical detail to go for exaggerated effect. So it's, it's always a careful balancing act of, you know, where, how much can you deviate from actual an anatomy to make that happen? Anyway, I think I'm pleased with the result more or less. I'm very close to this physically and, uh, um, objectively, I spent too much time with it now and I, I've kind of lost my objectivity um, as far as what's good and what's not good. Uh, I don't know. You know, I just, all I see is all the mistakes. But anyhow, enough blah, blah, blah. Let me uh, get to the final details. It's probably going to take me the better part of a day to go over everything, refine it, get it welded together, and then we will catch up once again as I actually am finishing off. Um, doing the finishing on it. I think it's going to be exciting with the bronze, brass, copper. They're um, subtly different, but I think it'll make a really nice balance. Oh yeah, and I got to make the base. I got to make a, a rocky outcrop. Forgot about that. So I still got to do all that. Still a ways to go. I will see you soon. Bye. And there it is on the wall. Impressive, I think. Um, so finally got 
Most of the components welded together were just prior to finishing. I have not added the tail. Um, I called the client yesterday and he's still in Mexico for, the, for his holidays and is not back until the weekend. I, because I expanded this thing, created um, the belly there and made it five inches longer, I'm now can't remember how big our wall was that we're going on there and if it's going to interfere. So I have not added the tail, which may have to be reworked and be a higher tail in order to fit within a fairly tight parameter. So um, I'm just waiting for that number three days and he's back and then we'll, I'll get that answer. So I'll, the tail will be probably the very last thing. Right now, what I'm working on is the rocky outcropping that this is sitting on is proving to be a real pain. Trying to get the hooves actually sitting on the rock um, at four different points at four different angles and stuff like that and it's just proving to be a bit of a challenge. So that's what I'm working on now is to get this um, kind of vague shape uh, touching at all points and then from there I'm going to make it look a little bit more uh, plausible as an actual rock. So uh, let me just pull this off the wall and show you what we have as far as an attachment point. So for my hanging attachment uh, bracket what I've done is take a piece of angle iron and it's um, going across here horizontal or creating the level of where this thing actually sits because it actually angles with the front hooves higher than the back hooves. Anyway, so I've got that this um, now determines that um, the mounting angle, so this will be the horizontal line. So I've got this piece of angle iron here, and I don't know if you can make out, what I've got is a piece of 16 gauge here. And I'm probably gonna screw things up here. The 16 gauge is on a 45, so following the angle, and coming back here. And what that creates is a ridge on a 45. And then I'm able to take my French cleat. Um, this is just a, a one I've got kicking around the shop. I'll design one specifically for this a little wider. But then when we fasten it to his wall, like so, this thing slides in and it goes in under tension and you've also got a lot of horizontal movement moving it back and forth uh, and you could also probably even tilt it slightly if you found that you were, weren't quite in the orientation. So this is a really forgivable way to hang something. It's very secure but it's also what you get it on the wall you can adjust it uh, and you can pull it off quite easily. So I really like the whole French cleat design. So what I'm going to do now is just start pounding away on my Rocky Outrun. Oh, I should also note, like the deer head that I did recently, a few months back, um, where I ended up using a trailer hitch ball for the actual eyeball so I can get a nice um, gleam on the eye. Um, I did a trailer hitch ball there, again, cut in half, and probably hard to see with the camera, but that's just welded in from the back there. And that just creates a very, um, nice round and shiny eye it gives it a bit of liveliness and probably what I'll do as I did with the deer is get the torch on there and blue that up a little bit so it's not so silvery um, and becomes a little more blue but it still has got the gleam in the eye there okay let's work on the base all right so what I need to do is bring this area up towards the hoof now um, and then it looks like this area needs to come in a bit and this area going up. Fun times ahead. patina the finishing stage here uh, typically I when I'm doing this sort of thing I use uh, a sculpt nouveau product again they're they're not sponsoring me yet 
Uh, antique black, but I am out. This was totally out. This is a gel that I typically, like a paste that I spread on there. I also noticed on my shelf that I have the same product, antique black with a spray. So I've never used this before. We're gonna try that. So let's pan down to the horse here, Eric, and let's see what we got. Okay, I pretty much got my coverage on here. I've gotta let this soak in for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, and then we can start neutralizing it and wiping it down. See you soon. Okay, so I've probably got another hour or two of fussing with it, pulling out some of the highlights and stuff. I, I think that what I need to do is take a break, step back and come in and just gonna do some fine tuning on it. But I think you more or less get the idea of our finish here. So this was, um, this was a tough one. <laughs> it was an interesting project, but I, I had a bunch of fumbles in it and really, you know, kind of struggled. Um, through the mid portion of this whole thing and uh, I think it came together in the end I'm happy with what the perspective on this is um, and the amount of relief we've got here I think this will go onto the wall quite nicely and we'll finish this video off with our beauty shots of it actually installed on my client's wall if I can get to see him next week so um, stand by for that in the meantime um, I'm not sure just recap this so this was the body was made out of silicon bronze um, the main was copper, the hooves are brass, and then my little rocky outcropping here is steel. So a bit of a mixed medium. Um, the tail I've only got bolted on right now because um, I'm not sure how much space I've got on my wall just because this thing grew here. So I may have to make the tail a little bit more elevated um, to make, to fit everything in. So that's where I'm at. Um, love to hear your comments on this one. Uh, I'm not sure. When I get into a project like this, I'm not sure that I've, I'm conveying all the appropriate information for people who are trying to um, get inside my head or learn these techniques here. So if there's things that you're confused about, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Um, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like the video, then please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you really, really like it, you might even want to consider supporting us on Patreon to help us make future content like this video here. So that's it for me. Thank you once again. And stay tuned for the beauty shots as we fade out here. I am out of here. See ya. See ya!